Hello and welcome to Media 7, I'm Russell Brown. The Sensible Sentencing Trust this week declared the government was out of touch with voters in rejecting the Trust proposal for a three-strike system for youth offenders with tent city prisons for repeat offenders. It's proof responses to a poll question at the end of a column by Trust founder Garth McVicker on Yahoo New Zealand. The poll, heavily promoted to Trust supporters through Facebook and other networks, is worthless in scientific terms. Yet, even more robust polls consistently find that the public believes sentences are too light. But a major study in Australia has found that the more people know about a case, the more likely they are to conclude that a sentence was fair or even too harsh. Jose Barbosa explains. You don't have to look too hard to find that public sentiment appears to be in favour of harsher sentences. I don't care if burglaries are going down, they were always too high. Um, in 2008 New Zealand election study, over 80% of the voters said we want to lock them up mm. for longer. However, the Tasmanian jury sentencing study looks at the issue a little differently. It surveyed jurors about the cases they've deliberated on. The final results suggest a completely different understanding of sentencing. Before sentencing, they were asked what punishment they thought the offender should receive. 44% chose a sentence that was more severe than the one the judge eventually imposed. But the majority, 52%, went with sentences that were less severe. After sentencing, they were then asked if they thought the punishment doled out was appropriate. Spread across different types of crime, 90% of the jurors thought the sentences were appropriate. So what does this mean? Well, it appears to show that when presented with the same information as judges, the public will mostly form the same opinion when it comes to sentencing. But we're constantly being told that the justice system is too soft. Our justice system is an illusion, it's a joke, and it's a warehouse. Couple that with the often sensational coverage of cases we see in the news. The Crown claims these men were on the hunt for cannabis and cash. And perhaps it's no surprise we appear to be huddled around the guillotine waiting for heads to roll. Jose Barbosa there. I'm joined now by Chief District Court Judge Russell Johnson. Welcome, Judge. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. My pleasure. Now, what do you make of the Tasmanian study? Are you in any way surprised by its findings? I'm not surprised. Not because there's been a similar study in New Zealand, because there hasn't. But it makes sense that when people know what the sentencing process was, know what the details of the case were, uh, that they'll see why the sentence was imposed in the way it was and understand it. And that's a much better way of um, uh, dealing with uh, that sort of information than, than the emotional tack which uh, your trailer just showed. Indeed. What lessons do you think we can take from it? It's interesting that uh, those people who were studied, uh, when asked general questions about the severity of sentencing at large still thought that sentences were too lenient generally but in their own case the case that they sat through and knew all about most of them by far the most of them thought the sentence imposed by the judge was more or less right why do you think that was the case why did people even when confronted with something that, that overturned their preconceptions still took the view that sentences in general were too lenient it's, it's very interesting and hard to, hard to explain. I've found myself falling into that sort of trap uh, from time to time, picking up the newspaper, reading the description of what happened and thinking to myself, well, that's inadequate. And I've taken the opportunity in a couple of cases to check back on the case and find out what it was about, change my mind. So it's exactly the same sort of experience that those surveyed people had. Which you have the ability to do. Members of the public don't. We, I, we rely on the news media. I, I have that privilege. Uh, but, but the public relies on the news media. And so there's a gap between knowledge and perception. Can it be fixed? Uh, maybe, the, maybe the courts uh, should do more about putting on web pages and so forth the detail of what they're doing so that people who are interested can study. But it's very easy for detractors of the justice system to trot out the victims, for instance, uh, ask them how they feel, and then in that emotional context get an emotional reaction from the audience, which is the public, um, and argue that the sentences weren't heavy enough. So do you think that we hear in the media from 
the wrong commentators or too much from one side? Um, well, uh, certainly a lot of airtime and space is given to pressure groups. Uh, and the mainstream, sensible, sober, uh, reflective uh, opinion doesn't seem to get the same attention. I'm not criticising ordinary court reporting or the in-depth articles which uh, we often read. They're very good. Court reporters themselves often do tend to have a much more nuanced view of this, don't they? Well, sometimes. Mm. And I, I think judges all experience in reading about their own cases that they would wish that it had been written somewhat differently. But, no, we live with it. One major change in terms of our insight into the court process has been the presence of cameras in courtrooms. Do you mm. think that's had a beneficial effect? Well, look, it, it obviously has in terms of openness of the court system. Where it's very important that it is uh, not opaque, that it's very transparent, uh, and cameras in court has helped that. Not all judges are happy with them, uh, and there have been the odd bad experience where uh, seeing the evidence played out in public has inflamed public opinion. That's not good for sober trials, but on the whole I think it's been a pretty good innovation. Now there are people who would say that uh, looking at the Tasmanian study, of course you're going to approve of a study that, that essentially validates what judges do. You're not saying that judges are beyond reproach in their sentencing approach, are you? No, not at all. Uh, judges uh, are, are quite willing to accept that um, there can be a variety of valid opinions about what is the appropriate sentence. But judges approach it in a principled way, uh, according to a structure, according to a legislative um, imperative which is given to them uh, by the Sentencing Act. How much discretion do they have within that structure, particularly since the Sentencing Act 2002? Has that changed things? Uh, well, it has changed things. Um, the Sentencing Act 2002 and its various amendments have meant that heavier penalties are meted out to offenders of the more serious kind. There are quite a few more rehabilitative sentences than there were, uh, and the figures clearly show that uh, there are a, a, a substantial number of people who might otherwise have gone to prison for lower-end prison sentences who are getting home detention or community detention, that sort of thing. Uh, the discretion of the judges, uh, well, th there are principles they must follow from the Act uh, to hold the offender accountable, uh, to be consistent with other sentences, um, uh, in the worst cases to give a sentence approaching the maximum, uh, but not to give sentences which are more severe than they need to be. And uh, in addition to the Sentencing Act, the Court of Appeal uh, sets a framework of uh, penalties for the more serious uh, kind of uh, matters, usually those involved in jury trials, which uh, judges must have regard to, and they can fix within a, a zone uh, the kind of uh, starting point for their sentence and, and take into account aggravating circumstances and mitigating circumstances and arrive at almost a mathematical formula uh, for arriving at a sentence. But there is discretion, of course, and uh, the quality of mercy still reigns. The perception is that uh, sentences for serious crime have become lighter over time. My, my understanding of the actual facts is that the opposite is the case. Uh, absolutely. Th that, that sort of allegation wouldn't stand up to rigorous uh, statistical analysis. Um, uh, it's quite clear that uh, heavier sentences are happening and uh, there's been legislative change which directs that. So, uh, yeah, I challenge that utterly. Judge Russell Johnson, thank you for your time. It's been most enlightening. After the break, what do the journalists have to say?